What is up party people? You are probably familiar with the story of Cain and Abel, either from teaching it to your kids or learning it at yourself as a kid. But today we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper into this story. So let's get started. So the story is in Genesis 4. I'm not going to read the entire story in this video, but the highlights are that Adam and Eve know each other. They have a son named Cain. Uh, which means the acquired one. And so they acquire a son. God gives them a son. They're very blessed. And then they have another son, Abel. And eventually Cain gives a sacrifice from the fruit of his labor. He's a farmer and he brings produce and grain to the Lord. Uh, whereas Abel is a shepherd and he brings sheep. And God accepts the offering of Abel, but does not accept the offering of Cain. This makes Cain very upset and bitter. And eventually he kills his brother in the field. God then shows up and asks Cain, where is your brother? Uh, where we get the famous, very famous line from Cain, am I my brother's keeper? You know, I don't know where he's at. God then rebukes him and curses him, and the story goes on to show the spreading evil over the face of the planet as uh, Lamech, uh, Cain's relative, then uh, kills a man uh, so we see this spread of violence. He also tells his two wives, so uh, this spreading of uh, sexual impurity as well, and just this kind of general decline into wickedness. And even in that short retelling, it comes to mind that we try to simplify this story and kind of moralize it for children, but this, a lot of these stories in Genesis, there is almost infinite complexity uh, that we can dig into when we start looking at the details and kind of chewing them over and just chewing the fat on, of these stories. And there are some obvious questions that pop up when you read this as a, as a kid or when you're teaching children this story. And one of the first questions that almost always pops up is why wasn't Cain's sacrifice accepted? And I think that's a great question but it's, it becomes very quickly an introspective question. Many of these stories are kind of like a mirror. When we read them, we, we can, uh, it sometimes leaves those details out, I think, so that we can put ourselves in that position and kind of have an introspective moment. Was it because of pride? Was it because, there are all different kinds of reasons that the sacrifice could, uh, could have been rejected by God, but we're not told exactly what that is. Was it because it wasn't from the heart? Was Cain offering an impure sacrifice? Was he withholding his best? Was it because he was coveting Abel? Was it because of his own pride? We don't really know. And I think that one of the, the really interesting things about a lot of these stories is some of those details that are most, that we most gravitate towards right off the bat are actually left out and left to, for us to interpret uh, after the fact or to try to derive from other details in the story. But what we do know is that it wasn't accepted and Cain doesn't take the news well. And God even gives him direction at this point. God tells him, remember, your sin is crouching at the door, but you have to rule over it. God is saying, look, you're, you're getting emotional about this. You're getting upset about this, but you need to take dominion. You need to protect uh, for your family. You need to provide uh, and you need to continue to work doing the work that you need to do. But we see that Cain acts sinfully, sin being um, a want of conformity to the will of God, not wanting to do what God tells us to do. I think we can get caught up in that sometimes as well, where we get so caught up in wanting uh, or thinking that God has certain things in store for us and wanting those so bad that we neglect to do the very basic things that we know God has already told us to do. So looking in, digging into this story a little bit deeper, there, these are some of the things that I would challenge you to look at when you do read through this story. First thing I'd ask you to consider when you read through this is God already knew what Cain had done when he asks him where his brother is. Just like in the story of Adam and Eve in the garden, right after they commit their uh, disobedience to God and they sin, they hide. And God asks them, where are you? Why are you hiding? God already knows what they've done. I think this is a very practical uh, takeaway for us in our lives. God knows. He sees everything. He is omnipresent. He is omni. He's aware of everything that we do. He's omniscient. So for us to not confess our sin and bring ourselves into harmony with the reality that God sees, I think is very problematic. I think that we need to look at this story and remember that God already sees everything that we've done and that God is a God of truth. 
And so when we want to live in truth, we should at least start calling things sin that God calls sin and confessing them to him. So, hey, real quick, if you're getting something out of this, I'd really love it if you hit that thumbs up button uh, and like the video, if you hit subscribe and hang out. Uh, this is what I like to do. I like to study the Bible and I like to do it with you. So if you uh, find this video interesting, let me know what you think about the story of Cain and Abel, something that you found in your uh, study and, and some takeaway or maybe some insight that somebody's given you. Put it down in the comments below and let's get a uh, conversation started. Another thing that I'd consider is even in Cain's sin, God protects him and uses him to continue his sovereign plan. So there is an element of punishment after this where God punishes Cain by cursing him to work the ground uh, and that it's going to be harder to work the ground, that, you know, it's going to be difficult to labor to eat. Uh, Cain says that this punishment is more than he can bear and that, you know, somebody's going to find out what he did and want to kill him. And God actually protects Cain in this moment. He protects him by giving, putting the mark of Cain on him so that people know uh, not to try to get retribution for what he did. I think this is a really important concept that the consequences of Cain's sin don't just go away. Even though God is protecting him and being gracious to him, the consequences are still present. And I think oftentimes we want our sin to go away. and We also want the consequences of our sin to go away. But I think it's very important for us to recognize that um, doing the right thing can be difficult, particularly because even if God has grace on us, we're still going to face the consequences. In fact, sometimes facing sin is even harder because we do have to face those consequences and that's what we're running away from. How many times have you not wanted to deal with the consequences of something and that's caused you to sin even more? So by living in truth, we are called to confess those things that God calls sin and to face those consequences. And I think this is part of what is so attractive about more liberal theology or denying God's wrath. Um, because of God's grace and providence,